This was a triumph. I'm making a note here. Huge success. It's hard to overstate my satisfaction. Welcome to Hankus Gaming, and guess if I'm still alive? Portal, the RTX version. Quite a heavy game to run, so in this video we'll have a look if we can run it at a 4K at a solid 60 FPS without sacrificing too much of the game's beauty. You just keep trying till you run out of cake. So let's start off by showing the optimized settings without telling you what they are. Running the game at 4K at a solid 60 FPS, while OBS Studio in the background is running as well to report this footage. So we're off for a good start. It's hard to overstate my satisfaction. This is running on a Ryzen 7700X with a 4070 Ti, by the way. But let's have a look at some settings. So Nvidia calls these the Remix settings. You can access these by pressing the Alternate key and X. And does anyone ever call this the Alternate key? So Alt X. And in this menu we have a few presets, so let's have a look at these first. Starting off with the Ultra preset, now on screen. Running at about 42 FPS, I'm making a note here. We see the light changing on the wall in the back a little bit, but not something you would notice while running around in test chambers and when you have a companion cube at your side, you only have eyes for that cube anyways. Switching over to the high preset, you might notice that the tiles higher up reflect less of the light and appear darker. This is a consequence of the light preset having a lower amount of light bounces. So on Ultra you have 4 at max and at least 1, while on High you only have 2 and at least 0. Also you can see the shadow in the doorway is a lot less sharp as it was on Ultra. And I think we noticed those light changes we saw on Ultra on the wall in the back a bit more. When standing still this looks a bit weird. But not everywhere in Portal you have these kinds of blocks. And again, moving around or looking at your companion cube, I think you won't really notice. 50 FPS, so over the Ultra preset an increase of a nice 16%. But for the good of all of us, let's have a look at the medium preset. And there we have it. By the way, I saw no difference in settings between medium and low, but I haven't looked at the developer settings. So there could still be differences to be found when looking at those. Anyways, at medium we mainly notice the volumetric lighting is gone. So before, the light from the window on the side gave a bit of a steamy look. A bit more atmospheric light, which is now gone and it looks a bit more plain. Running at 54 FPS from ultra to medium, that's an FPS win of 23%. With custom settings, we do what we must because we can, and so we set lighting to the same values as the medium preset, two bounces at max and zero at least, but we turn all other settings to high and or on. For now, by the way, we will have a look at the specific settings later on. And this gives us an FPS of 48, so 11% slower than medium, but 12% faster than ultra, right in the middle, one might say. By the way, I'm running all these tests using DLSS or Super Resolution, as it is called in Portal RTX, on the performance mode. Also I noticed while switching that there is a small difference in performance going from high to custom or going from medium to custom, even if we set the custom settings to the same values. So I guess the answer is to be found somewhere in the developer settings menu. But for now, all I want to advise is to select medium first and then go to custom and set your custom settings. It might just give you a few extra frames. For all of those people who are still alive, though I hope no one has died watching this video up until now, we turn on frame generation. And by doing that, we suddenly get a whopping 69 FPS, so that's 43% better than what we just had, or even 64% better than the Ultra preset. Now I must say, frame generation does have its quirks, so starting the game becomes a bit unstable in my case with frame gen turned on. Sometimes it loads, but sometimes it doesn't, and sometimes it doesn't repeatedly after one another. Also, load times seem to increase. I don't know why. 
controls become a bit more sluggish as well. Still, however, I think I will leave this on. I always play with my trusty DualSense for my PlayStation 5, and although controls do become a bit more sluggish, it's by far not as terrible as playing Cyberpunk with frame gen turned on. In Cyberpunk, I thought it really wasn't playable. In Portal, however, you don't need super fast reaction speeds, at least for as far as I've played the game until now. Don't know if this will change in the end battle against GLaDOS. Oh, oh no, I spoiled the end. But I don't know if it becomes a problem there, but you can always turn off frame gen if you need to. Anyways, keeping frame gen on for now. And for your convenience, we will have a quick look at these settings side by side. So we'll notice less bounces of light on high and the shadows being less sharp. And on medium and low, we miss the volumetric light. And putting our custom settings side by side, we see the impact frame generation has on our FPS. Huge success. And we see how it all compares to Ultra. On our custom settings, the shadow in the hallway looks a bit darker, by the way. We saw that in the previous shot as well, I think. But that must be because the light bounces less far into the tunnel, making it a bit darker. But let's compare all the settings separately and see what impact each one has. And we'll start off with volumetric lighting. Still in the same room, this is getting a bit boring, so we'll move in a second. But yeah, quite a visual difference without any hit to our FPS. So we'll definitely leave this on. It makes the room feel a bit more moody, a little bit more mysterious, like in fact, this is a very old facility and some dust has gathered in the air or smoke from the opening down below has came into the chest chamber. Yes, leaving it on. The noise in quality, currently set to high. Have a look at the shadow going around the platform as the ball moves over it. Shadow lines are sharp and crisp. When we turn the noising off, you will notice that the shadow is a bit more fuzzy. You will also notice, however, that our frame rate has gone up by 8 to 9%, so that's quite a performance boost. Oh, and by the way, I forgot to turn off frame generation. Since not everyone will be able to use frame generation, I will turn this feature off for our comparisons. Also, by the way, I'm doing these comparisons with our two bounces of light and zero at minimum. Side by side, you'll see the differences better. In ray tracing, when rays are cast on non-smooth surfaces, the rays will bounce in different directions. As far as I understand, each frame these rays could end up at slightly different positions. I also think that is why we saw the light moving in our preset comparison on the wall. For shadows and reflections in non-smooth surfaces, denoising can be used to smoothen out the results of those different rays, creating a sharper reflection or shadow. With denoising on, now these points of data make a beautiful line. Still at denoising, looking at the reflection of the energy ball in the water. I've slowed down footage a bit, long live the power of editing. But I thought the reflection of the ball had a little bit more ghosting with denoising set to low. But to be honest, seeing it side by side, I wonder if it's in my head or if it's really there. I have a hard time seeing this. Well, anyways, I will leave denoising set at low for our optimized settings. The feel of the game is not compromised, we still have reflections, we still have good looking shadows, and we certainly get a nice percentage of frames extra per second. By the way, frame gen was turned off here, and looking at the water now, we even get slightly more FPS by having turned denoising to low, about 12%. Let's carry on, I've got experiments to run, there is research to be done. Enhanced assets. Now this is a fun one. Beautiful game with enhanced assets turned on. Let's turn them off. What is this? Why is the window giving light? If you want to play with enhanced assets off, go play the original version of Portal. That looks way better. You do not want to be playing this way. Yes, we do get more FPS and pain in our eyes. Moving on quickly before those images start to haunt me in my sleep. I was curious what the amount of light bounces actually cost, and I was surprised to see that the more bounces don't seem to cost all that much. The minimum amount of bounces seem to matter most actually. For my optimized settings, I will keep the amount at 2 max and 0 min, since I think you will only notice the difference when putting images side by side. But I would encourage you to put it higher and just experiment a bit. I'm being so sincere right now. 
If you press Alt X, you get the settings menu as mentioned earlier. But what I found really cool is that these settings change directly when you switch them. So this is a cool way to compare settings or experiment with them. Have a try with the amount of bounces for example and see what they do. Now before we go to our optimized settings, there is one thing I wanted to have a look at. Our super resolution mode or the DLSS mode. As for most of the time and for most games, I would say go for quality if you have the FPS to spare, go for performance if you need more FPS. But we'll have a quick look, quality first. I'm running around in circles cause then you can best see the effect while moving. See the grade above in the screen? That looks pretty okay now. On quality running at about 27-28 FPS. Just because I was curious about the FPS, switching to 1440p. We get around 60, so let's say double the FPS. But our goal was to play the game in a nice and crispy looking 4K at 60 FPS, not that console performance mode 1440p. And I'm joking of course, if you really need the FPS, switch to 1440p, it def definitely doesn't look bad. But for now, sticking at 4K, so let's have a look at DLSS performance. Now you'll notice that the grade more often looks a bit messy, but still not disturbing or anything. Also, all other footage in this video was shot using this mode, being around 42 FPS, but remember that our frame generation is currently turned off. Now there is a ultra perf or ultra performance mode as well, and if we select that, look at that grade, what a flickering mess that is. Performance is really nice though, coming in at about 74 FPS, that's even higher than switching to a lower resolution, but I don't think you want this. Because you notice in more finer detailed items that when moving around they get a bit messed up and I find it distracting. However, I'm not even angry, we will stick with DLSS in performance mode for our optimized settings. And that brings us to our optimized settings. Super resolution turned on at the performance mode and I will turn on frame generation, but it could be a controversial choice. If you can, try it out. See if you can live with a little bit of lag in your controls, but mostly if you can live with the crashes when you start a game. Now I have a little workaround for that, which I will show you in a moment. Now remember to select the medium preset first for the other settings and then go to custom because it sets some developer settings in our favor of our FPS. And then the custom settings, zero minimum light bounces, two at max, denoising set to low and every other set in setting set to on or high. In the gameplay showing I'm almost at a fluent 60, I sometimes dip under 60 but keep in mind that my OBS studio is used for recording at this time, which is costing me a few percent. If you use FrameGen, remember to set your NVIDIA VSync to Adaptive. But look at me still talking when there's science to do. So the little fix for when your game crashes with FrameGen turned on. If you start a game, when you see the scary man with Valve in his head, the Alt-X menu can already be accessed. Go there while the logos play and switch frame gen to off. Now the game loads without any problem. You can load your game and once in your game, turn on frame gen again. It's a bit of a hassle and a bit of a shame that it doesn't work better without crashes, but oh well I guess. Could of course be something on my system. You know a solution? Let me know in the comments. But that is it for Portal RTX. If you enjoyed all my still alive song references, why not leave a like and why not subscribe? Can't get enough of Portal? Watch my other video where I compare Portal versus Portal RTX. And otherwise, I'll see you again in two weeks when my next video comes out, which will probably be about Tempest Rising, the demo, which I saw in the THQ Nordic showcase a little while back. How do